Hey everyone, I'm still trying to figure out where to record my videos in my apartment. It's quite complicated and I'm getting a kitten tomorrow. So meanwhile, we are in my kitchen because I just find this really comfortable. And I play the guitar here. It's just a really comfortable place. But today we're gonna talk about dark mode and I wanna show you how I implemented dark mode by using the least amount of JavaScript possible. And that's not because JavaScript is evil, but because I believe it's always better to use the right technology for the right job. And in this example, by using CSS, we can greatly reduce the amount of code that we write, even CSS code. So are you ready? Let's hop into it. So I'm here on my JavaScript course, learnjavascript.online, and I recently implemented dark mode. You can see if we switch, switch to light theme. This is a the light theme and switch to dark theme. Let's take a look at another page, like the lesson page. Switch to light theme, yeah, and switch to dark theme. Now, here's how you can implement dark mode with the least amount of CSS possible. First, you start by selecting the root element and in a web page, the root element is the HTML element. In a web component, that would be the component itself. So we select that with the root selector. And all you have to do is give some variable names for the colors. Now, this contains a lot of legacies. The names are terrible, so don't get inspired from these names. But I can tell you primary is OK, secondary is OK, text color is OK, border color is OK. but yeah, all the rest, they're not really the best. It was a quick fix, quick hack. I wouldn't be a developer if I had perfect variable names, right? These colors would be the default on your default mode. There is a bit of legacy here, which is the website was originally on light theme. But if for some reason you have dark theme first and then you want to do light theme, then you can flip them around. But in my case, if I switch back to light theme, you can see nothing strike through anymore because these are the main colors of the website. And now, by just adding the class dark to the body, which we can add from here, or a fancier way, I don't know if you knew about that, add class, CLS, dark, nice. And you can see that I'm, well, this would have probably been better as root.dark, but it's okay. I'm overriding the root element whenever it has the dark class with the following. The primary, I'm giving it a darker primary color. That's for accessibility reasons. And I actually can just override the CSS variables that I need. And as long as I'm using those CSS variables throughout my website, the amount of work that I'm going to have to do is going to be very minimal. Let me show you what I mean. So let's start with the P color. Or let's go with the text color. So text color white. But on light mode, the text color is 25272A, which is this dark color. So that means if I select, for example, this text over here, it's it has a color var p color. Yeah, so it has a color var p color, which is white. But now if I scroll, yeah, but now if I scroll up and remove the dark class and select this again, it still has, there. there's no conditional CSS anymore. We're still using the same variable name, but the variable color has changed. So you see here, it's var p color. Now I can undo, and let's select it one more time. And this time I'm gonna use this drop down here, switch to dark theme, take a look over here, nothing's gonna change, except, yeah, this is broken because I edited from DevTools. Click again. The CSS declaration is not changing. The only thing is changing is the actual value of the P color. One more time. Yeah, nothing changes. So yeah, most of the work will be done here on the HTML element on the root by uh, creating those variables and then again using them where necessary. You will of course have to do some other fixes for the borders, but I just want to show you that this approach is 80% of the work. So I'm mentioning this approach because another approach would be to create a dark theme.css and a light theme.css, but the amount of CSS you're gonna have to write is gonna be quite insane. It's gonna be quite big. So most of the times for most websites, this is gonna be enough. Now you might be wondering, the first time I visit this website, it uh, what kind of theme is gonna show me? 
and it's gonna show you a theme based on your operating system preferences. So if I go to preferences and I go to general, I have on my Mac OS, I have the dark theme by default. And you can detect that from JavaScript. So you can run the following code. So window.matchmedia or just matchmedia, this is a function that allows you to run a media query. In that case, prefers color scheme dark. And you can take a look, it returns an object with the property matches, which is a boolean, so dot matches. That's true, because I have dark mode on my computer. And if I try light, it's going to return false. This may be different on your computer depending on your operating system preferences. And it also works on Windows. Just in case you have to support older browsers, I would use this short circuit syntax here. So window.matchmedia and and window.matchmedia. So in case this is undefined, so I can show you if I make a typo of it, it's gonna, it's gonna short circuit at the first undefined. It's not gonna run this, which means it's not gonna break. So then I can say, if window.matchmedia and, and window.matchmedia prefers color scheme dark and it matches, then the only thing I have to do is add the class dark. So then we can wrap this with an if condition, if, and then document dot document element. And this is actually the HTML element and class list dot add dark. Ta-da. And if you haven't seen the document, the document element before, this is the HTML element. And so the reason why I'm talking about this is because a lot of the times I see people writing a lot of JavaScript to make a dark theme work. For example, if you're using React, you would have a props for the theme and then you would pass it down or you would create a context. Sometimes you really need to create a context for various reasons. But a lot of the times, dark theme is something that can be just handled completely from CSS and only the switch would need to be handled from JavaScript. Now you might be wondering, but I'm using web components and will this work if I have shadow DOM? And the answer is yes, it works because CSS variables will pierce the shadow boundaries of a custom element or of the, of the shadow DOM. So let's take a look at an example here. If I make a uh, syntax error, so for example, if I omit this and I run, we have a new element here that is called syntax error. That's a custom element, I've developed it, so it's not something in the browser. And you can see it has a shadow root and div id error. And you can see here, the color that I'm using is var dark one. And this var dark one is coming all the way from the root element, not of the shadow DOM, but of the page, because CSS variables will flow or will pierce the shadow boundaries. So that's great, so that's great, it does work with Shadow DOM. Now, I'm a developer, I think you already know that, and you're most likely developers too, even though we're in a kitchen, this is not a cooking channel, which means it can be quite tough for us to figure out how to make, how to design something to dark theme, assuming we already have the light theme. And I wanna share the resource that I've used, which is this website, material.io, archive, guidelines, style, color.html, and you can see here how we can visualize the hierarchy of our application. You have the status bar over here, and this has 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 as a color. And then you have the nav bar, or the app bar, which is going to have the 21, 21, 21 color. And then the body of our app is going to be on the 30, 30, 30. So this is the background of our app. And finally, the cards and the dialogues, you see with this box shadow and this 4242 color, it makes them look, appear on top of the other one. So this creates some kind of 3D effect or hierarchy of, which is where we have the background. The way I see it is the background is all the way in the back. And then we have the app bar covering it. And then we have the cards and dialogues that open up on the top. Keep in mind, I'm not a designer, but I like to design stuff by myself whenever possible. So which means if you're going to follow this approach, I would create CSS variables for these three or four colors and I would try and use them whenever possible. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully in another corner of my house and maybe with the kitten. See you next time.